Live from the Bob Levy Broadcast Center, overlooking the Toms River, it's time to get up, get out, do something. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Be a part of the show, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning and welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. I am Phil Brilliant, substituting for Jeremy this week, minus yesterday. And uh, it is 6.09, give or take three minutes. I think that's Bob in Lakewood. I always forget who we're giving the time for. Um, give or take three minutes on your radio pop app. It is September 29th. It is going to be rainy all day today. So uh, today is a day to get up, get out, and do something from your car and uh, bring your umbrella along the way. I am very happy to be joined this morning by Anthony Russo. I'll call him Tony. Uh, Big Uncle Tony. Uh, Executive Vice President of Government Affairs and Communication for the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey, CIANJ. Good morning, Tony. Good morning. How are you doing this morning? Thank you for uh, having me, Phil. Oh, I'm glad to I'm have glad you here. I was, here. It's funny, you know, not funny, but, you know, I get liberties when I substitute for Jeremy. I think, one, I get to give Kelly who does a lot of the programming time off, and I go out and I try to find people who I think people want to hear from and are interesting, um, but I called you anyway. Yeah, well, I, <laughs> and you're a great guy and a fun person to be around, so I'm happy that it's worked uh, well. you and, invited me. And we have an interesting past. Our, our paths yes. crossed in a couple different ways. So I always like to start when uh, I interview people to let people get a, a little background as to who they are. So tell us a little bit about yourself sure. and how you ended up in this in this position. Well, thanks. Thanks again for the the opportunity to be here. But I was born and raised in Jersey City. I'm a first generation Italian American. So my mother and father came from Naples. I have oh. two other brothers. One's a physician. One's an attorney for the state of New Jersey. I decided to go into engineering. Graduated NGIT. Literally the day of my graduation, I took off my cap and gown, drove to Trenton, interviewed with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, and it was offered a job. And hence my career path uh, on the environmental side. That's where I met you right. uh, in your business, uh, took off. So I worked for the DEP for four years. I was an environmental consultant for five. Then I really became, became the government affairs person, lobbyist uh, for the uh, chemistry council, representing chemical pharmaceutical companies for 11 years. Then I spent about two years down in Washington, D.C. lobbying, and uh, I've been with the Commerce and Industry Association now for about three and a half years. Yeah. And so that's my of, path. Right. And what a lot of people don't know, and this always throws people off, is you know, you can't just go lobby in New Jersey anymore. You actually have to, you have, have, to be registered. You have to be um, registered as a lobbyist. Yeah, what's interesting about my background is, again, I'm an engineer, and I really wasn't political. Uh, so, you know, full disclosure, I'm unaffiliated. I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. And yet I have a position now where it's very political. So it, it's kind of an interesting uh, situation to be in, but I'm enjoying it, and so, I, I think it's interesting. So you're telling me that, like, when you walk into the room to give testimony – that all the people in front of you on the committee yep. haven't already looked up your uh, reg- voter registration? I'm sure. Well, it's a good question. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that they think, well, you know, he's from Jackson Township, Ocean County. He's got to be conservative. And, and I'll admit, you know, fiscally, I'm very conservative. On the social side, I'm moderate to liberal. Uh, but again, you know, who I represent are the right. businesses of New Jersey. So I try to stay focused on that, neutral, and say, well, what is the issue in front of me? And, and how is it going to impact their business? Right. And by the way, Fiscal conservatives usually have daughters only. <laughs> yeah, and I do. I have two daughters. <laughs> yeah, two daughters. <laughs> uh, Seventeen and fifteen. I go to Jackson Memorial. Uh, so uh, it'll be interesting uh, to see what happens. Um, when my one daughter's a senior. She's looking at colleges. So a lot of things going to be happening in the next year. For oh, me. it so definitely. Happens. I want to say hi to my two daughters and yes. my wife who's listening. So yeah, that's great. Thank great. You. So tell us about you know like what is going on right now in Trenton. I know I listen to you all the time when we go to different meetings and there's a you know as much as we think nothing's happening in Trenton, there's a lot happening in Trenton. Yeah. I mean it's it's always uh just to give you a background on on our association if I can. Yes, please. We represent about 900 different companies. I call them employers. Uh, when you look at the diversity of our membership, and we, we're happy to report that we have 18 colleges and universities, about 40 manufacturers. We represent attorneys, accountants, bankers, uh, hospitals. Um, so there's always something going on in Trenton that impacts a segment of our membership. Yeah. And so, I, and just if I cut you, just I cut sure. you off. No, jump in here real quick. What I also like about the CIA and J is you bring everybody together, but then you also carve out the different sectors. Right into their own type of groups. Right. 
you know, which gives them a voice. Right. So they may they may not feel they have a voice in the big side, but you carve out the sectors so that when you go down to Trenton, you can pull from right. all the different sectors. So the way we, we handle the diversity of our membership is we do business w- th- through what we call roundtables. So we'll have a healthcare roundtable. You're a member of our Environmental Business right. Council, which really just brings together all the environmental professionals and talk about environmental issues. Same thing with the healthcare professionals. We meet four times a year, talk about healthcare issues. We'll have a marketing roundtable. We'll have a manufacturing roundtable. So this way we could focus in on their issues four times a year. And But the, the lines of communications are always open where they'll call me about something going on in Trenton. Hey, Tony, there's a bill that I need you to kind of focus on. What's going on? So it's always busy, and I like that. Uh, but the same token, I tell people that <laughs> in an ideal world, if government stayed out of the way of business, I would be unemployed. Right. So, you know, it's it's unfortunate that I'm busy. It's unfortunate that I have a job. Happy personally, but, you know, again, in an ideal world, uh, if government just got out of the way of business, I, I think it'd be good all around. Right. And I and I like also, and I'm not going to, there, there may be another organization that may be similar to yours, which I won't mention, and they put out news blasts right. and they give, they in their they give a thumb up or thumb down. Right. Okay. When you put out the news blast of the bills in Trenton, you give the background, you give the basis, right. and you give the positions of your members. Right. Which I really like. Yeah. And, and, and what really sets us apart from the other chambers of commerce and the other groups. You said it. <laughs> business <laughs> no, just and keep industry, going. <laughs> yeah, it is really what we pride ourselves in. It was we're really free market advocates. Right. So that is the centerpiece of what distinguishes us between other groups. We really truly believe that if it's a free market kind of uh, atmosphere, uh, New Jersey thrives. So that's what really sets us apart. But to your point, yeah, I mean, one of the things we try to do is there's a lot of information that comes out of Trenton. I try to boil it down to what's going to impact our businesses, what's going to impact our members. Now, can any business join anybody in New Jersey? Anybody, yeah, absolutely. And we are a statewide organization. I should say that we're based in Paramus. I work out of our Trenton office. Uh, but uh, And there's two ways to look at whether or not you're a statewide organization. Where are your members located? I mean, we are clustered up in the north, but we do have members down south. But we take a look at the issues. I mean, one of the things that we pride ourselves on, and that's why they opened up a Trenton office five years ago, is because we really want to start tracking these statewide issues, which I can talk about, that really impact uh, our members. And and that's how we distinguish ourselves as a statewide organization. So we talk a lot about statewide issues. The hot button, the hot topic we've talked a lot about lately is the Transportation Trust Fund or the lack thereof as to what's happening with that. But I know there's other big things going on in Trenton also. So let's let's hold the Transportation Trust Fund aside because if right. we do that, people will continue to listen to us. Um, what else is like the hot topic right now in Trenton? Our number one issue, uh, and we've been advocating this for about four or five years, is trying to phase out the estate tax. Uh, New Jersey is one of only two st- uh, states that has both an estate tax and an inheritance tax. We feel a lot of our businesses are actually family owned. So we've actually gotten a lot of feedback from our members saying, when I take a look at my estate uh, and when I want to leave it to my children, uh, they're going to get hit with a pretty hefty tax. We're trying to phase out the estate tax. Um, some of the other issues, uh, one that I think we just skirted is what's called this mandatory pension payment. Uh, right. Very hot topic in Trenton. Uh, there was talk about amending our state constitution by adding a ballot question on November. And that's a great place to stop you right there, because I right. want to talk about uh, ballot questions, how things get on the ballot, and how they choose to do that. Okay. And this is a good opportunity here. Remember, join the conversation, 732-505-1160, back in a moment. The Sean Hannity Show, this afternoon at 3. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin returns next. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. It's 621 on September 29th. We're continuing our conversation with Tony Russo, the Executive Vice President, Government Affairs and Communication at the Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey. When we went off to break, we threw the teaser out there about, uh, we were talking about the pensions and and about the potential of it being a ballot question. How do they choose what can be a ballot question and what not? Yeah, good question. And right now, when you go to the uh, bo- ballot box or vote in November, you're going to have two questions right now. And, and people often ask me, well, Tony, how do these questions get on? Not to get too deep into the weeds, but what's interesting about how a question gets on the ballot is the governor really has no say. It's really driven by the legislature. And the legislature right now is controlled by the Democrats. They have to have the right magic numbers in order to pass what's called a resolution. So anything could be floated as a ballot question. And right now there are two that are going to be in November. One and they is, are? Yep. That one is to dedicate the motor fuels gas tax. 
uh, which we'll talk about later, mm -hmm. uh, to transportation, which is, I think, going to pass overwhelmingly. I think anybody's going to um, vote no on that. I think the more controversial one is expanding casinos and Jersey. gaming up to North Jersey. Uh, and the big news there is last week, the, the the parties that are back in the expansion actually stopped advertising. So, yeah. you know, my, my gut is, I mean, it's such an emotional issue for especially South Jersey here in, in South that, uh, I, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see how the voters vote on that. But those are the two questions. Isn't there a part of that bill or that part of that ballot question, though, where if it was to be approved, that this part of the allocation of funds has to go back to back Lexi. Back to Lexi. Yeah, a lot of people didn't realize that uh, built into that resolution, if you really look at the details, the Atlantic City casinos would have first right of refusal. So right. there are going to be two licenses, and they can't be located in the same county, and they have to be located 75 miles north or outside of Atlantic City. Uh, but they would have the first right of refusal to those two licenses. And then they would have X amount of days, and they would have to spend X amount of dollars in order to build a casino. I just think it's so controversial that you know who from South Jersey is going to vote in right, favor right. of that. It's something that we, I should tell you that uh, you know, as a again free market right. advocates, we did support, and I actually testified in, in support of it because at the end of the day, we there are there are folks out there, and we believe this too, that we are losing those gaming dollars to New York and Pennsylvania. Right. Maybe people from North Jersey just aren't going to drive two two and a half hours down to Atlantic City. So it's a very controversial issue, but those are the two issues that are on the ballot. Right. Um, the one that I think we skirted, which really is more problematic to the business community, is locking the state into these pension payments. Now, I want to be clear. We support the fact that pensions should be paid in full. We do not support amending our state constitution because when that happens, that constitution is changed forever in perpetuity. Right. And, and you can't take that away. So just think about fast forward. The new state uh, uh, budget comes out. Uh, if the pension mandatory pension payment is $5 billion out of a budget of about $34 billion, that's a big chunk of money that now has to go to these pension payments. What's going to happen? If the money is not there, if we're in a recession, either going to have to raise taxes or cut critical programs. Right. you got to get the money from somewhere. Our position is it, it's deliberated and debated each uh, spring when the state budget, and they have to come up with a better solution. Right. Uh, you know, the, how to fund the pension payments. We do not believe that amending our state constitution is the right, right way to do it. And you hit a key point, too, is when it comes to these ballot questions, you need to read the ballot question. Right. Don't just read the highlight that says, you know, casinos in North Jersey. Right. You know, you really need to read the details. We know that we had one two years ago now, right. which was to add monies into the Green Acres program. Open space. Open space. Right. But if you read it thoroughly, it was taking money out of the underground storage tank right. fund, which was going to help people clean up contaminated sites. Yeah. Two other points, Phil. Yeah, I we can got make them in like about, 30 seconds. About yeah, ballot questions going. is when you look at the voter turnout in recent elections, it's at an all-time low. That's right. So are we really getting the consensus of the people? That's number one. Number two, when you go vote, I mean, now granted, how many people actually take the time to read those questions when they're in the booth? Now, granted, you get them in the mail and you you're your supposed homework to read before. Them. You got, yeah, but my point is uh, that's not the right way to govern, uh, in my opinion. I mean, right. That's what we elect our officials to go to, to, to govern for and us. have that debate. Exactly. So. I would assume, though, that you would probably support the idea that this may be a very large voter turnout this year uh, I, with, the, I, I, with the candidates for president that we have. Great question. I mean, I, I think it's going to beat uh, last November, we had two out of 10 registered voters that voted. I think we'll be a lot higher than that. I think maybe 40%. Okay. Yeah. Remember, join the conversation, 732-505-1160. We will be back after the news. Wake up with Jeremy Grunin. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Live from Town Square Towers at the heart of the Jersey Shore, wake up with Jeremy Grunin. Get up, get out, do something. Join the conversation, 732-505-1160. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. Listen online at WOBMAM.com. Good morning. Welcome back to Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin. I am Phil Brilliant, substituting for Jeremy this day. Um, it is Thursday, September 29th. It is 
6.35, give or take three minutes for all of you on the Radio Pup app this morning. And we're continuing our conversation with Tony Russo, the Executive Vice President of Government Affairs and Communications for Commerce and Industry Association of New Jersey, CIANJ, as we say for short. And uh, so what is happening and trending with the Transportation Trust Fund? So I know we want to go fast and furious because there's fast a few furious. things that we want to go. So full yep. throttle. On a Transportation Trust Fund, I think what surprises a lot of our uh, Trenton insiders is that this hasn't been resolved yet. I mean, we all thought in June when it fell apart that uh, the legislature would come back in the summer uh, and take care of it. But yeah, everybody knows that at this point there's still a, a stalemate. Uh, personally, I think that probably a lot of these things are probably getting hashed out behind the scenes. And we may see some movement in October, but probably not until after the national elections. Right. And uh, the story that we hear the, is the that issue, there's, there's three guys in a room right now. Right, right. And, and supposedly they go back and talk to their caucuses. I mean, the issue right now is this $0.23 cent additional. Uh, so it brings up, uh, it would bring the tax up to about $0.37.5 cents a gallon. Right. That's a significant increase. Now, granted, we haven't seen that since 1988, an increase in the gasoline tax. But the governor and some other legislators are saying we need some sort of tax fairness. So if we're going to raise the gas tax, let's do away with another tax or cut... The big issue is that the governor and the assembly in June voted for a one and a half percent cut tax. in the sales tax. The Senate uh, came together and said, "Let's do a package of cuts. One is what we supported, which was the phase out of the estate tax. Uh, pension contribution exemption would be uh, higher. There'd be gasoline tax credits. Different package but brings it up about nine hundred million. So there's a debate right now. Which way do we go?" I think it's also important to note that uh, this is such a controversial issue. I know when I surveyed our members, our members were split. A lot of our folks are saying that, yeah, okay, if the money is dedicated to transportation, I'd be willing to pay it because it is a user fee. Right. So if I use the roads, I should pay it. But the other half say that this is going to be a big impact. And a lot of people out there feel that sometimes the money is squandered and that uh, it's not used properly. So It's got to be dedicated to transportation. And that's why I think... This might uh, the voters I think are going to vote overwhelmingly to support the dedication in November. Right, so that first ballot question or second ballot question. Yep. That's why I think they they'll probably wait till after uh, until after that, and this way it's locked in, and then whatever happens happens. But so I think it's a it's a controversial issue. You got to remember, there's 120 folks in the legislature plus the governor, so 121. And the governor likes to say the magic numbers are 41 on the assembly, 21 on the Senate, and then he's got to uh, support right. it. So a lot of people involved, and it's such a controversial issue that I think it's going to play out a little longer. A little longer. Yeah. And uh, for me, you know, again, if they're going to raise the gas tax, they're going to raise the gas tax. The money's got to go just for transportation. got to be dedicated. And right, right now, I just paid a dollar eighty the other day for fuel. Um, so if you're going to raise it by 23 cents, do it now while it's low. It's a significant increase, though. <laughs> it's a big I increase. Mean, it's it an, is. It and is. I think a lot of people just want to say, well, how did you arrive at this additional 23, 23 cents? cents? So, you know, yeah. again, it's going to be a, one of those full throttle issues. It was issues more that, than 20 cents and less than 25. Right, right. So, so didn't, didn't we would still be lower than Pennsylvania and New York. Right. And there's a, 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 and tax, a, yeah. there's a group out there that says that this is really a lot of people from Pennsylvania and New York come in from out still of state to pay. They still will. But I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, uh, I think if we raise it to that level, we'll be a little bit cheaper, but will that compel them to cross the, the state line to Well, when you pay $15 to go Maybe. across the Lincoln Bridge, Lincoln Tunnel, Maybe. whatever it is, <laughs> right. you may, you may still right. come across you know, whatever right. it's being. So two other topics I wanted to hit was, one, you have a great course tomorrow, right. which I think everybody should be interested in. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're proud of the fact that uh, 18 colleges and universities are our members. We're proud to partner with Montclair State University on a half-day workshop tomorrow. Uh Folks don't realize, and it's your money, so your tax dollars are set aside for finance uh, finance incentives or financial incentives, I should say, whether it's tax credits, grants. So we're, we're going to have a half-day workshop where we're going to hear from the state representatives on various uh, money that's available for development um, of sites. So do you get it from what's called Grow New Jersey, the uh, ERG program, which is the Economic Redevelopment Grant Program? And, and you're familiar with the environmental ones, yes. like yep. the Hazardous Discharge Site Remediation Fund, the UST Fund. And a lot of uh, people think that there's no money. And there's no money. Right. The, the problem is there's been a lot of debate that the application process sometimes is cumbersome. Right. The tax credits are on the backside. Can we simplify it? So we're bringing together not only uh, experts, the, the agencies, but we're going to end the workshop with a panel discussion with legislators mayors um, and uh, developers, developers to talk about what can New Jersey do in addition to what exists today to make it easy to develop so this sites. is a great so program at Montclair tomorrow, Montclair, which really is good for the end user, the developer, right. 
as well as the municipality or county who basically can be a partner in those programs, as well as the consultants, contractors, and those who do the work. And that's the key, Phil. I think you hit it. Municipalities need to uh, rebrand themselves as partners to these developers. Exactly. uh, Because a lot of times uh, that money could be available to them. So we're we're excited about it. And uh, And they find out more about that on your website, On our website or Montclair State University's Continuing Education Program. Okay. And your website is CIANJ.org. Not to be confused with CIA. Yes. So not to be confused with CIA, <laughs> you could go there for different reasons and be in a lot else. of yeah. trouble. So we got a few minutes left. I want to pick your brain. Yeah. Who's the next governor of New Jersey? Yeah, great, great question. Uh, and if you think about what the, the landscape, the big news yesterday was Mayor Fulop from Jersey City decided not to run. Yes. Uh, again, inside baseball, inside Trenton, he was one of three. You have Senate President Sweeney. You have the former Goldman Sachs, uh, former ambassador to Germany, uh, Phil Murphy. Uh, and now with Full up dropping out of the race back in Murphy. Uh, again, Senator Lesniak is going to throw his name in there. I'm sure there's going to be some other ones. But it's going to be an interesting primary season next year uh, on a Democratic side. On a Republican side, people are still waiting to hear whether the lieutenant governor is going to run. Uh, there's uh, always the minority leaders, uh, John Bramnick in the Assembly, Senator Kane in the Senate. And then uh, I know Assemblyman Chitterelli has already announced that he wants to run for governor. Uh, the other thing to point out is in addition to the governorship, uh, the Senate is up and the Assembly's right. up. So everybody's up, everybody's for, up for everybody's up for election next year. Yeah. And, and I think the fun really starts in January uh, when um, you know everybody starts jockeying for position. So it, it'll be a toss up. I mean, you know, we have forty legislative districts in New Jersey. A lot of the folks seem to think that, you know, not much is going to change on the Senate and Democratic side. The Democrats, by the way, on the assembly side are just two seats short of a, a veto proof majority. Wow. So what happened in uh, last November was kind of interesting because they picked up a few seats on the Senate side. They're almost there. So it, it'll be interesting to see who surfaces to the top, what the issues become, what happens with Atlantic City, what happens with um, you know our economy. And also what Are happens with the presidential thinking? election because a right. lot of times Absolutely. depends on who's in the White House kind of influences what happens in your states. Right. And we all know that the governor is Donald Trump's transition leader. So, uh, yeah, what yeah. happens? So if he could he could President be leaving he could be leaving January twentieth for a right. job in uh, Washington. Right. So, uh, yeah, my uh, I guess if I had to uh, stress to your listeners, to I know I said some members, is to get involved. I mean, the last thing we want to see is a low voter turnout. Right. Um, and a lot of people say, well, they're not happy with the candidates, but I, I think it's important just go. So it's get up, cast get out, vote. and vote. Yeah, you got to cast a vote. You vote. Tony, thank you for joining us this morning. Real quick, how do people get a hold of you if they have topics, interest that they want to bring to Trenton? You could email me at A, as in Anthony, R-U-S-S-O, at C-I-A-N-J dot org. Uh, or check me out on our website. Uh, as my contact information there. So thank you very much, Phil. Thanks for being here. We'll yep, be back in a you. moment. Get more Wake Up with Jeremy Grunin at our website, WOBMAM.com. News Talk Radio, WOBM AM 1160 and 1310.